All right. Okay, um, we're back here. It's part two of uh, Roger's. Uh, uh, we're doing an interview with Roger again. So this is a second part. Uh, Roger, um, we're going to continue. Basically, uh, just like we talk about, we're going to talk about the Philippine progress, which I'm really excited about uh, this foundation here. So yeah. uh, can you tell us the story about this foundation and also how you got involved in it? Yeah. Thank you. If you know any backstory, that would be even nice, you know. So yeah, thank you, Mario. I, actually, this is quite an opportunity to spread the word about the foundation I got myself involved with. Okay. Back in 2013, you remember there was this typhoon Haiyan, right? That, that, the strongest typhoon that ever hit land, and yes. it hit. So we had a group of uh, you know, um, you know, um, concerned uh, citizens here in the U.S. who went there to visit the. Uh, the calamity, the after uh, typhoon, you know, destruction. So they were there, and one of the, you know, were you part of, of that group, the the that founding group? No, you weren't. Okay. No, I wasn't. I was still teaching at that time. Uh, okay. Two thirteen. Okay. That was ten. And one of the, uh, you know, one of those who went there, was well, her name is Rosella De Leon who is actually the uh, current executive director of the foundation. Okay. She was the one who actually saw and experienced and met with the children that were victims of this devastation. Okay. And it was her that she decided that she wanted to help and uh, decided uh, to uh, leave her uh, education profession to establish the Foundation for Philippine Progress. So she's and also a teacher then? Just like you, yeah, okay. was an academic in the university. Okay, so uh, you know, fast forward uh, five years ago, the launching of the foundation, I was invited uh, to come uh, at Portland to actually uh, grace the occasion by uh, singing a you know a song. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and at that time, it was the year before I actually uh, retired. You know, it was. Uh, Almost, uh, you know, five years ago, that would be 2018, the year before okay. I was there. Okay. And so it was there that I saw the work of the foundation. I was really uh, moved by the uh, kind of work that they were doing. Because uh, one thing, you know, about helping out in the Philippines, you really want to know who you are, you know, channeling your donations to. And uh, in the past years, and I think this is true with a lot of Filipinos who have been very generous in giving their help. Yes. That really don't know where the money is going, yes. you know, don't really have a way of uh, tracking if what they are giving is actually getting to the people. Yes. And they become quite a problem. Mm -hmm. So anyway, when I saw that uh, work they were doing, uh, I noticed that the people that they were sending the funds that uh, uh, they planned to do, because it was just the first year, mm -hmm. uh, was uh, through the uh, grassroots organizations that set up you know, uh, organize themselves to actually do something about, you know, their uh, community. Mm -hmm. So uh, the uh, the channels where the funds were being uh, sent to uh, were lessened. It went uh, it went directly to the people who actually manage the the resources. I was quite impressed at how they actually communicated with these people and how and how these organizations responded back by saying this we did. So that was what uh, really impressed me. And so when they approached me, by the time I by by the time I finally retired, okay. uh, approached me and said, uh, "We would like to ask if you would be interested in being part of the foundation." Okay. So, so after teaching and after uh, you know seeing what they're doing, uh, it made a, it made a lot of sense for me to actually now uh, act upon what I was teaching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yes. I was climate science, you know, and I know what was happening with the, the science behind it. But mm -hmm. uh, it was an opportunity for me to actually uh, extend what is now happening in the Philippines, my home country, my home people, yes. you know, yes. now that I'm uh, free to do what I have to do. So I, I, uh, you know, uh, it didn't take a while for me to uh, accept the invitation. So mm -hmm. since I was actively involved with fundraising activities, uh, programs, and you know we uh, I uh, we started off uh, 
uh, teaching, for example, online Tagalog, you know, for mm -hmm. others who want to learn Tagalog. We mm -hmm. had, you know, Aklatan, uh, a reading program where we read No Limitang Here, Jose Rizal's El Filibusterismo, all these. And the intention there is for others who are who have grown up here who would like to know more about the Philippines, to appreciate the Philippines, because right. that's where it starts, right? Uh -huh. you, uh, it, it's not just getting into the, uh, you know, the communication, the technology of being, uh, knowing what's happening there on time. Because a lot of young kids here, much as they want to communicate to their uh, uh, relatives back in the Philippines, they cannot because they can't speak the language. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> or, or they don't know much about the history. Mm -hmm. So it was a start for me as a, you know, as an educator. I did those programs, and then uh, I got the I got deeper into um, uh, you know uh, getting involved with fundraising efforts. Okay. So uh, so this. Uh, you know, aside from, you know, uh, speaking uh, uh, in front of, you know, student organizations, telling them about the foundation. And then, of course, uh, part of that uh, cultural, you know, orientation is also the music, which I am very much, uh, you know, a part mm -hmm. of. Yeah. I have been part of that whole 70s. So it was, uh, I gave, I uh, there was one conference where I gave the history of OPM, for example. Okay. And uh, you know, encouraging our young artists to, to you know, as artists, they can create, sure. Uh, music is a, is a very, you know, powerful medium, sure. Mm. But now the kind of music that they have to look into is music that will inspire action. Mm. Uh, it's to inspire action, to help and bridge, you know, helping people in the mm. Philippines. So, mm. yeah, a lot of young artists here in the U.S. are getting onto that kind of... Uh, you know, approach of making music that will uh, enlighten uh, the history and, and the need of a people back home uh, in this unique relationship between the U.S. and the Philippines. Right. You know, we have a mm -hmm. very unique relationship for one. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and so, uh, uh, so that's part of the cultural uh, in the education aspect of the foundation. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I, I I am yet to involve myself in probably joining a medical mission because that's also part of what they do. Okay. Uh, doctors and nurses to the Philippines, to the remote uh, villages to do um, uh, medical mission, you know, operations. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the uh, human rights, you know, that's where, you know, uh, we try to also engage in... Um, raising funds for those who are most impacted by calamities, okay. you know, because a lot of uh, these victims, you know, they don't die from the storm. Mm -hmm. They actually die from waiting for yes. help. Yes. yes. Yeah. When they, when you get uh, hit by a storm, everything is destroyed. Right. You survive. Yes. But then there's no food or water. And if it doesn't come for days, then that's where they begin to have serious, you know, uh, uh, yeah. victims, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, that's where we come in, uh, in, the ter in terms of, you know, uh, uh, sending help. Uh, so uh, in, it's in the fundraising that is now uh, my focus. Uh, okay. in, for example, last summer, uh, Mario, uh -huh. we did, uh, Seattle to Portland bike ride. Wow. <laughs> you, you know, it's the annual STP. So yes. STP is back after COVID. So mm -hmm. uh, summer, uh, about 8,000 bicycle riders were uh, rode to, uh, to Portland. But we uh, started the Ride for the Philippines, right. where 100 uh, Filipino Americans and supporters, uh, you know, um, decided to join, you know. So mm -hmm. we had 100 cyclists and we were able to raise, you know, close to about $12,000. Wow. Uh, but, you know, we could, it's a start. We hope mm -hmm. that uh, summer we're able to gain more uh, folks to join in and ride for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and there was one uh, incident there that I shared uh, last Sunday to the uh, at the gala where I said, you know, half uh, I was not um, I was not yet halfway when my body started to cramp. Really, yes, <laughs> really bad. Uh -huh. Oh my! Goodness. 
And I was uh, questioning myself at this age, do I still have the energy to do this or the capacity to do this, right? Uh -huh. so I was ready to quit. Okay. And, uh, I, I said, you know, why, why am I doing this? And then I realized if it was just me, I could just say no more and I could go home, right? Right. I just realized I was writing for the Philippines. <laughs> right. You, you were thinking about all the people that's going to benefit from your fundraiser. And, and you more, know, more, more profoundly, and more uh, profoundly, uh, Mario, mm -hmm. when I realized that I could just say I quit, but the mm -hmm. people I'm writing for do not have that choice. Right. You know, they cannot say, I don't like this anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that was what the, you know, uh, Pushed me to finish the the race. We well, actually congratulations. Came... <laughs> yeah, that's we that's a, we that's a big feat. Yeah, we came in. You know, uh, at about seven o'clock in the evening, we were the last to to roll in. Uh -huh. The racers were already uh, packing up. Yeah, but you know what I told the young the young boy that was with me, his name is mm -hmm. Lorenzo. I told him, you know, Lorenzo, the sweetest victory is the one who comes in last. Yes, you know, <laughs> we're the ones who decided to finish this, even if we are last. So that's a very good story to tell, man. I'm glad you yeah. did that. You know, you can tell you can tell that story in every fundraiser from now on. You know, I mean, it's true, and uh, you did it. You know, so yeah, you did yeah. mention about human rights. You know, uh, yeah, you, you did mention that. Uh -oh. And I, um, I'm setting up this uh, interview with this human rights lawyer from the Philippines. I don't know if you know him. His his name is Chad or Chell Diokno. Yes, of and course. He's yes. coming he's coming to Seattle and they're setting yep. up a, um an interview with me. So that's really big, you know, I'm kinda happy about that. So you know that's so and I heard he's a very uh well known uh, human rights lawyer, you know, from yes. the Philippines. So yes. uh, you know so uh, you know maybe that's something you know I could you know, set it up with you guys, you know, I mean, uh, what, what were you guys doing for human rights? I'm, you know, that's what I want to know. Yes. You know, human rights uh, is a very, uh, you know, wide, you know, uh, span of issues right. and, uh, you know, any kind of help to people who are actually in need of, uh, you know, of support of help is actually uh, can fall under human rights. Yes. And there, there are, uh, you know, intensely political human rights issues mm -hmm. and, uh, are other issues that uh, fall under the, the you know uh, uh, umbrella of human rights. Yes. So talk about human rights. It's about human dignity. It's mm -hmm. about human uh, survival. It's about people who are you know just uh, simply uh, want the basic needs. Okay. So where we uh, uh, you know address human rights, uh, mm -hmm. it could be living conditions. It can be their uh, medical conditions or food or mm -hmm. you know. Just simply being safe, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. But uh, as uh, you said, you know, this uh, guest that you're going to uh, have will probably uh, uh, talk about uh, human rights in the area of political issues, you know. Yes, yes. And that is very intense, you know. Yes, uh, and scary. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, the foundation uh, has to be clear about what human rights mean because uh, sometimes people make this judgment about just because we uh, address human rights, you know, then they make a uh, judgment that is all political. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is political. Everything is political. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But that's saying anything is political. Yeah. You know, you know, because you you uh, political means you're either uh, you know on one side or the other. You know, you mm -hmm. cannot say, I don't want to get involved because not getting involved gives uh, advantage to e either side, right? Yes, yes. Uh, not saying or by not speaking up uh, provides an advantage to someone who is trying to uh, pursue an issue. So mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, as far as the foundation is concerned, we are just uh, an organization that focuses on human dignity. Human you know, yeah, yeah. And, and let's just say, let's just say that if uh, you know, for the sake of argument, if you say that he a person is an enemy, and you find the enemy dying, mm -hmm. you know, you can't leave the person dying yes. just because enemy. Now, uh, it's an irony that we are such a Christian country. We mm -hmm. promote Christian values, 
And yet when it comes to human dignity, we choose which one to, to provide help to and which one to not provide help. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. though they're in the brink of survival, mm -hmm. you know. And so yeah. uh, that is something that I feel like, you know, I have to keep uh, emphasizing to a lot of our Kababayan because mm -hmm. they to focus too much on after all you know after all life is good you mm -hmm. know and they say you know we'll just pray mm -hmm. you know but i i will also uh make this comment that yes praying helps mm -hmm. to make us stronger spiritually right. but we need to act yeah you know and acting does not need to mean and does not mean that you have to go out and do uh you know hard work acting yes. just a simple one dollar mm -hmm. or you know, 10 pesos you know for someone who doesn't have anything that's big yes. you know you know mm -hmm. and if we are you know if we are we say who we say we are we are a big population of filipinos all over the world yes you know? and i think we can uh extend just a little bit mm -hmm. and asking too much and we are quite a number of uh you know pe uh, a population so big worldwide yes yes <laughs> you know and all we are asking is that you know let us just think for a moment because things are not going to get any better mm -hmm. you know uh, climate change is a real uh crisis for mm -hmm. farmers and for fishermen who depend on land and walk as their mm -hmm. survival. Mm -hmm. And if they not have access to this, what do they have? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, it, it's not going to, climate change is not going to change in the next 10, 20 years or 50 years or 10, 100 years. Uh, climate change that we're seeing right now is going to go on for mm -hmm. a long time. And, and it's going to get worse. I mean, in terms of... It, yeah. it is. It, yeah. it will be. It will be. And I hate to be the the you know the bearer of bad news mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but we have to brace ourselves mm -hmm. you know political situation will definitely be a preview to how we are going to deal with climate change mm -hmm. and, uh, it's uh, the the huge divide between the rich and the poor yeah. those who are capable and those who are not will be a dire Future. So the uh, Philippine Progress Foundation uh, will be an advocate for uh, basically, you know, trying to fix climate change in the Philippines. Absolutely. Well, we okay. can't not fix it. I mean, you know, we will, address we'll, that we'll, issue basically. Yeah. Because I don't. Yeah. I don't. I'm we, not sure if I, they they talk about it. In the, they probably do, but it's not. You know, it's not in the mainstream. Media. Well, it's not. It's not in the mainstream. Uh, you know, mindset because you yeah. know you. To be proactive about it uh for example do you have a you know sustainable support system for uh, for any uh community that is devastated by uh a, a typhoon or an earthquake or you know and and there there is uh, some scientific you know speculation nowadays that climate change is actually uh related to the uh uh the, um, uh, you know, the number of earthquakes that are uh, happening. Mm. Uh, there is, the, they're seeing that there's some correlation to the to the drying up of our mm. water table, to the, uh, the, 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 you know, the occurrence of uh, uh, earthquake. Mm -hmm. Because it makes sense, because if you, if the water table is dried up, yeah. you become, you, you uh, eventually have, you know, these caverns uh, that's below the land, you know, mm -hmm. the surface mm -hmm. that do not was was once had water. Now they're caverns. Of and course, eventually will collapse. And collapse, yes. Yeah. And you have these major collapsing, and of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, these are leveling off, and uh, that's the speculation, uh, you know, that's being. Uh, put forth by some scientists so mm -hmm. things you know i mean uh yeah, yeah the political uh you know uh makeup of our folks back home uh have to be bigger they have to be uh more uh visionary in term in terms of how to survive what mm -hmm. is inevitable future it's yes. going to happen there is no question 
often. There's, it is going to happen. Temperatures are going to be up. Uh, water precipitation is going to be heavier. There's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of landslides because we have been cutting trees. Mm -hmm. All these need to be addressed in a country that used to be very, you know, we, we, were, we were very rich na in natural resources, yes. but because a lot of cutting of trees, a lot of uh, lack of planning of urbanization and flooding control has not been addressed. And, you know, and people continue to get poor. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, and so these are main issues. And, uh, and if somebody says, uh, well, uh, you sound like a, you sound like a radical. <laughs> 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 you know, anyone who addresses, you know, being very, if you become critical of things that they do back home, unfortunately, Filipino politicians are the most sensitive uh, balat sibuyas kind of people, you know, they, mm -hmm. you th they think that you're uh, attacking them when in fact you're attacking, you know, the kind of thinking. I'm mm -hmm. not attacking you personally, I'm attacking the way you're approaching things and, you know, and uh, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, we have a political system there that uh, still uh, have not become so mature enough to actually face the reality of, you know, mm -hmm. of our you know, um, the reality of the world today. Yes. You know. Yes. And well, I'm glad there's a voice there, even a small voice. You know, from from you and yeah. your organization. That's, you know, hopefully yeah. it will get bigger yeah. and bigger. You know, I mean, there are environmentalists in the Philippines, but just like you said, you know, they're not in the mainstream. Uh, right. Know, topic or uh, you know. Yeah. The, yeah. And so. Sometimes they're even they're even uh, you know they're even harassed and targeted. Yes. You know, this yes. red has become quite you know it's a cop-out you know this red tagging thing is a cop-out because mm. you know instead of uh you know uh responding and becoming more you know uh, uh collaborating and and uh, getting into a conversation why do you think that you know mm. and go to the root of it uh, they cop it out by saying oh you're you must be red you know and yeah and, and it's like it's it's, it's, it's bad yeah yeah and that's what yeah. i what I mean about you know the narrowness and the immaturity of our of our uh, you know leaders, the leadership there, the, uh, you know who claim to be the the representative of the people, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I mean, I mean, I'm I'm not hitting on anyone. I'm not hitting on them personally, uh, but at the same time, uh, it's a it's a challenge to to for them to really uh, have that. Uh, um, true reflection of exactly what are we doing, yes. you know, because it's not going. By the time we get to a point where climate change is going to hit on huge tracks of the of the globe, you know, regardless if you are there as an official or not, you are going to be impacted. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's going to impact everybody. It doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor or whatever, you know, or whatever your political, uh, you know. Yes, uh -huh. nature will not choose who is the well off and who is not. Yes. You, yes, you know, uh, and nature uh, do not challenge the strength and power of nature and uh, be arrogant to think that you are able to uh, escape it. And there mm -hmm. is no nature if it's going to be existential and, and global. Mm -hmm. It's a global dilemma. And, and I mean, it's not just the Philippines. It's actually a global issue. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, with the with the foundation, I'm just gonna call it the foundation. Okay, yes, so yes. Like deal with it. So the foundation, uh, are they? Do they have any? Um, besides what you talk about the climate change and all that, but do they have any? Uh, um, what do you call this? Uh, they're doing things right now that's going ongoing right now. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. As we speak, uh, we are actually uh, a a um an um. A national organization in the Philippines, uh, 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 the the National Disaster Response uh, uh, co Coalition, uh, are do, uh, doing a lot of work for okay. communities that are remote, uh, remote and are impacted. For example, we have been uh, building boats for a barrio that a uh, fishing barrio that had all their fishing vessels destroyed. Uh, and we have, you know, ongoing programs for some of the farmers where we've been providing them livestock like uh, uh, baby pigs or uh, chickens so that they can raise them again. 
uh, we have been uh, able to uh, provide, you know, farm uh, tools, uh, farm equipment, and we have been providing, you know, um, uh, you know, medical help for for uh, communities that do not have that. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm are... glad you mentioned that about the farmers because uh, I just did an interview yesterday. Actually, it's this uh, person is a farmer uh, he married to my uh, cousin. And yes. They're over at that island I told you, you know, in Camotes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he he was over here in Seattle about a month ago because mm -hmm. uh, the, there was the APEC, you know, the yeah. Pacific. Uh, he represented the farmers of the Philippines. You okay. Know? Uh, and now he's going to Jakarta to represent, you know, like... Uh, you know, you know, so he he's like the voice for the farmers, and, and what he's not, saying, huh? What what yeah. is his uh, uh, what is his assessment of uh, the conditions of the? You farmers? need to talk to him, because uh, yeah. he's he's really into it, and he has lots of ideas, and uh, his mission is basically to help the small farmers. You know, uh, you know, because he really feels that they need to. To uh, progress a little bit more, you know, than what they're doing, because uh, the the output that they make, you know, you know, the whatever they're farming, uh, it's not enough, you know. The, you need to instead of just one ton, it should be ten tons, you know. Right. Instead of and uh, he wants to get there, you know. So he right. he's an amazing guy, and right. eventually I'll introduce you to him, you know. So of course, yeah, yes. he's yeah, he's, yeah. He, he just told me he's going to Jakarta next week, so to yes. you know, and he's gonna represent the Philippines again, so. He's like, you know, he's really into farming, and uh, and now that you mention it, you know, so that's probably another, you know, that basically you can help him out too, you know, or oh, you know, your your foundation. Yes. yes, of course. I mean, uh, farmers are the most, uh, are, they're the engines of our uh, of our economy. You yes. know, the that part of it is most farmers uh, produce uh, the uh, products, and yet they buy the same products that they produce. You know that. Yes imported and then they, they and then yeah. they buy it back at a, 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 a price that's higher than what they yes. had done you know and they're and a that, victim of the climate change you know i mean uh, yeah. because the prices goes up and down based on on the weather you yeah. know and then their 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 harvest is based on the yeah. weather you know yeah. and uh, if there's a big typhoon next thing you know they're down you know i mean they lost yeah. all their crops you know yes so, and yes. then if, if 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 there's no rain you know yes. it will dry so right, so uh -huh. they're very weather uh, oriented, you know. They, yeah, exactly. So exactly. you're, you know, the climate change is big for yeah. farmers. Yes, and the farmers and the fishermen were the least responsible for this calamity of climate change. They did uh -huh. not do have anything to do with changing the climate. They were just planting and fishing, and that's all they did. You know who uh, initiated climate change? Well, you know it was it were those uh, you know countries and industries that used up a lot of uh, yes. oil. <laughs> mm -hmm. And actually, they help the the environment because uh, he he just mentioned to me that uh, if you're if you're uh, like corn, you know it emits. Uh, I can't remember the number he gave me, but the oxygen that it emits, Ox you yes, know yes. that that helps the the yes. you know, the. The, the, the environment, you know, said yeah. so. Whenever they, that's why they, you know, corn is really important because of the oxygen that you know that it needs, yeah. you know. Yeah, you know, that yes. helps. So and they're corn, actually helping the environment yes. in a sense. Yeah. In Visayas, you know, where you come from, you uh -huh. know, and sugar are the main mm -hmm. crops, and uh, you know, I'm sure he is aware of the fact too that farmers, the income of farmers, uh, are dwindling, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Because and you know the the crops that they produce are now being impacted. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And those are the folks we help. Yes, the farmers and the fishermen. Yes, and the, the bad thing about it is in the Philippines, you know, they look down on them because they, you know, it's it's not uh, nobody goes into agriculture to make money, you know, because they said, oh man, that's a dirty job. That's that's for yep. the you know like yep. the poor people job. You know, you know, yep. they, they don't consider it something that yeah that, but you know uh, Mario uh -huh. you know Mario, actually yeah, yeah, think about it uh, farmers and the fishermen make up the bigger number of people in the Philippines they are the masa mm -hmm. you yes. know yes. And pockets of you know western thinking of you know the kind of you know uh, 
well-to-do urban kind of attitude mm -hmm. uh, are pockets of the cities, you know, mm -hmm. but when you go out to the country, it's the bigger population of the Philippines is the, the, uh, the farmers, the right. farm. Mm -hmm. the yes. You okay. know? Yeah, I, that's true. So I'm glad you brought it up. I mean, uh, I'm just amazed. In fact, uh, you know, maybe one of these days, you know, I, you could introduce me to uh, Rosella, you know, maybe I could uh, do uh, uh, another uh, interview with her too, you know, yes. just to, yes. to get her story, that. you know, you I, know what I'm saying? And that would bring more, you know, yes. so people would know more about this foundation. So this foundation is amazing. In fact, when you mentioned that that's always been a problem because of that big typhoon, a lot of people wanted to donate to help yeah. out, but they don't know how to do it. Yeah. Not only that, they don't know if it really went there. You know, yeah. was, they were afraid yeah. that it went to somebody's pocket or, you know, yeah. and yeah. that was a big problem back then. But so many people wanted to donate and help out, you know, yes. and, and this foundation is basically the answer, you know, to help yeah. out, you know, to be the, you know, that could yeah. do it, you know, to, to be able to do it. And, you know, since you guys are very transparent, you know, people yeah. know exactly where the money and the money yeah. is going or what donation they give. So, yes. Yes, that's really good. I'm really happy that you're doing this. You know, it's a yes, good thing for you. <laughs> yes, Mario, I am just as happy because now we have somebody who can be our voice. <laughs> you know? No, but but uh, seriously, uh, Mario, because you have the you have another kind of uh, tool in your hands, and that's what you're doing right now is actually yes. serving it, it, uh, directly in providing everyone you know you're directing them to go because you're the one who has the capacity to spread the word and yes. i think that's why i would uh, like to you know take your invitation of uh, anyone uh, i feel who would like to share something from the foundation mm -hmm. you would be our you know practically our mouthpiece <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you yeah. I, I just started it's not too long ago i just started last march yeah so I'm not even a year and, uh, you know, so, yeah. and uh, I got people lined up already, you know, for an interview yeah. and they're, they're all people, same, you know, same thinker, you know, I mean, uh, yeah. people who yeah. wants to help out and, uh, yeah. and, uh, you know. Power, more power to you, Mario, because Thank this you. is, a, yeah, because this is a new medium. In yeah. Dina, unlike the, the, in our time, you know, it was radio, right? Yes. And, now, nowadays, you have a blog, you have a, you know, a social media platform, and mm -hmm. and that, that's where you focus on, and a lot of people, uh, you will, uh, as you are saying, you're surprised how a lot of people are now lining up and listening yes. to you. Eventually. Yes, and I'm, it's only yeah. a hobby, you know, I'm only doing it as a hobby, it's not even a... <laughs> for careful about hobby. <laughs> huh? Yeah, Be careful. Because I'm like you, I'm retired, you know, so I said, <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm not doing anything, so I said... Let's let me do this, you know. But no, as a but, hobby, I'm, it's not for uh, making money, you know. No, no. But you know, uh, uh, Mario, anything that comes from the heart, and mm -hmm. I, I see that you are also one who wants to to uh, give back. Uh, mm -hmm. Your heart is giving back by the mere fact that you want to do something that will serve, you know, uh, a purpose. You are already doing something that is uh, beyond your personal, you yes. know. And mm -hmm. I think uh, we are on the same wavelength when we right. say we're doing this only because we don't have any other thing to do. Well, precisely, you know, yeah. we are retired. Now we are uh, ready to serve, yes. right? We are yes. ready to serve what, in whatever. And, and it's your heart that uh, you follow what's in your heart. And what I, I can see what's in your heart is that you want to do this simply because you want to do something and you're acting on it. That's what I mean. You yes. know, people cannot just sit back and just, uh, you know, have a good time. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the fact that you know people can have a good time sure you know mm -hmm. you deserve it but mm -hmm. at the same time uh, be aware too that there are you know others who probably need some help and just do not turn your back completely is what i'm saying yes. i agree everyone's you know uh you know hard work and they want to you know um celebrate what they have earned in their lifetime mm -hmm. but i i really have a problem with those who have completely turned their back Yes. And even have a an, even an ounce of you know, di ba kahit na konti lang, mm -hmm. you know, Pilipino ka naman eh. yeah. <laughs> hindi ka naman Amerikano, hindi ka naman uh, hindi ka naman Inglaterra, hindi ka naman ano, you know, you're yeah. a Filipino, yes. and if you are a Filipino, you know, have that 
sense of kababayan. May mga kababayan kang yeah. kung tatalikuran ng gusto na kinalimutan mo na ang bayan mo. Exactly. Yun na aking uh, inaabot. Kasi ma- uh, naghihirap ang mga tao sa bayan natin. Yeah. But Yan I'm ang- sure I'm gonna spread the word on you guys because you guys are doing a good job and I'm, I want to every time I talk to somebody if they're if thinking about the Philippines I'll basically mention oh, the, man. the foundation <laughs> the Philippine progress you know I'll mention it to the that lawyer the human rights lawyer I'll mention it to my cousin the the, you know, the farmer you know yeah. and, uh, so you know that's connection right there you know so yeah basically Mario the the, the direction that we have uh, we would like to do uh, to uh, put our attention to our folks who are from on this side of the ocean so to speak mm-hmm. you know side of the ocean those who are in Europe maybe those who are in Middle East those Filipinos who have the uh, resources to to contribute mm-hmm. because that's where it counts you know uh, I mean the folks in the Philippines you know they're the, uh, the receiving end. Right. You know, and and however, you know, the politicians and the people there who make decisions might want to know too that you know, yung kanila iba yung dating natin because mm-hmm. uh, yung dating natin sa kanila would be to hey man, start working on your stuff. You know, yeah. yung dating ng mga dito naman sa on this side of the Pacific, mga Americano, Filipino mm-hmm. is you know, you know, we like to ask for your bit of your resources, kahit yes. na yung kapilang, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. We always say there is no such thing as a small donation. Yes. You know, do you forget? Kahit na sambihin mo ng one dollar lang yan, yung one dollar. Okay, that's a question I have to ask you. If somebody wants to donate, where do they send their donation? Or yes, give them the website? or Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Just go to the website. It's the uh, philippineprogress.org. Okay. Philippine People, Pro- philippineprogress.org. If you want to yes. donate, that's where to go. Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So it's already 12:10 so pretty soon it's going to mapuputo na. Maraming maraming salamat. Yeah. Roger, thank you very much. Keep it and going, I, man. Yeah. And I think that this is not the last uh, we will continue as we go. The journey is long, but yes. uh, glad you are uh, taking on this uh, uh, opportunity to come along with our journey. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, and uh, we started off as interpreters, but yes. we are not with the interpreters of the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Peace. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. More power. Uh, okay.